So my name is Chris Harwood. I'm co-director of the East Central European Center at the Harriman Institute here at Columbia University. Uh, and I'm very happy to welcome you to the first edition in the year 2021 of our ongoing uh, series that's spanning the 2020-2021 academic year, uh, where we're looking at very contemporary films, films from within the last five years, all of them, from East Central Europe. And uh, our, our topic is contemporary society and its discontents. So we, we tried to select films from uh, this part of the world that are uh, presenting contemporary society and some of the issues that are there, whether they're political issues, social issues, uh, uh, things like that. And um, uh, so we're very happy to uh, uh, have our distinguished guest, uh, uh, the, the filmmaker of the film that hopefully all of you in our audience got a chance to see over the weekend or within the last day or two. Uh, and so, uh, again, I want to uh, thank uh, our participants uh, for, for being here. Um, and our audience for joining us. And um, uh, uh, we, we, the co-hosts, will be starting this conversation with the director, uh, but we welcome you to uh, submit um, your questions to the chat if you're, uh, if you're joining us on Zoom. And if you are on uh, YouTube, there is, uh, someone remind me the name of the function where they can enter their, their questions there. There's a, a possibility there. So a little further into the program, uh, we'll, we'll welcome your questions and uh, forward them to the director. So um, I'm joined today by Alexander Boskovich, who is my co-director at the East Central European Center. And just as I am lecturer in Czech in the Slavic department, he is lecturer in Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, and uh, also uh, uh, an expert and researcher in Russian and East European modernism. And he is joined today by our extramural guest, uh, uh, Professor Rosan Jagalov uh, from uh, New York University, uh, who we are very glad to have joined us again. This is a, a, a reprise. Uh, Rosan helped us uh, with the introduction of a, a Bulgarian historical film last year when we had a series of films on, on historical films. And I'm very glad that he's uh, joining us uh, from the UK today uh, to, to help us understand another uh, uh, Bulgarian film. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, Rosen is a, a professor in uh, the Slavic department at New York University. And he is the author uh, of a, a recent publication from uh, last March of, of the new book, uh, From Internationalism to Postcolonialism, Literature and Cinema Between the Second and the Third Worlds. Uh, so thanks so much uh, for joining us, Rosen. And if you'd like to take over and uh, introduce our distinguished guest, the director. Um, sorry, I, I lost my... Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, um, sorry, I'm not hearing you very well, but that's besides the point. You know, it's uh, really I have the very happy task of introducing um, Stefan Kumandarev, the leading Bulgarian filmmaker right now. And we're really very lucky that, that he's joining us at what is uh, past 11 o'clock uh, in Sofia right now. Um, born in 1966 in Sofia, uh, Stefan Kumandarev studied medicine and worked for four years as a psychiatrist as a, as a, at a, in a children's clinic and before enrolling in a course on film, filmmaking and directing at the New Bulgarian University from which he graduated in 1999. Um, since then, he's shot uh, several documentary films, among them probably the best one, known ones are Bread Over the Fence, in 2002, Alphabet of Hope in 2003, and the 2009, The Town of Bandante Women. But of course, he's much better known for his uh, fiction films, which uh, the full, the full length, the first full length one of these was The Dog House in 2000. And uh, in 2008, uh, his uh, really first big break uh, came with the big, the world is big and salvation is working from everywhere, which one major claim. Uh, this was 
the first Bulgarian film shortlisted in the Academy Awards for, for best foreign language films. And uh, it was really the, the most wide, worldwide theatrically released Bulgarian film ever, distributed in over 93 countries, uh, winning over 35 awards in international film festivals. Uh, his next uh, his next uh, feature film was The Judgment in 2014, uh, which uh, was the Bulgarian entry again for the Academy Awards um, for Best Foreign, foreign Language Film. Uh, and it won 12 additional awards at, at other film festivals. Uh, and then came the movie which we've all gathered to discuss and my personal favorite, the 2017 Directions Posoki, uh, which was the nominee in the section on certain regard uh, at the Cannes Film Festival in, 2007, uh, in 2017. He has recently produced the sequel, Rounds, which came out a year ago and is working on another one, which hopefully he'll, uh, he'll tell us more about. Mr. Kumandarev is also a member of the Bulgarian uh, Film Directors Association, uh, Bulgarian Film Producers Association, and he's produced uh, several of his last films, and which is actually something not that, that usual. And, uh, you know, I, I have a few questions about his experience of that. And, and finally, he's also a member of the European Film Academy. So this is the brief introduction I, I have. You know, it's really a pleasure uh, to have you here. And unfortunately, <laughs> I really don't, right now, I don't hear any sound from you. So um, maybe for the next second, Chris and Alexander can take over as I restore my sound. Okay. Uh, Thank you I have a number of questions that, that actually uh, I would be happy to, uh, to start our conversation with. So I do not know, I am not <laughs> getting any sound, but I'd be happy to ask yeah. those questions. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so my first question well. actually has, uh, is a slightly long direct question. Uh, and it, it has to do with the fact that uh, the best Bulgarian film of the last uh, of the last decade, you know, the late 2000s, and this includes uh, Mr. Komandarev's directions. This includes rounds, also uh, glory and the lesson to other great recent Bulgarian films, are about society and assume a, a certain critical position vis-a-vis -vis Bulgarian society, whereas it struck me in watching films previously, in the, the 2000s, for example, uh, including uh, uh, Mr. Kumandarev's Doc's, Doc's Home, or The World is Big and Salvation is Working Around the Corner, that there was really no representation of society, of, of Bulgarian society in those films. These were uh, films focused on uh, a very small number of individuals, very unique individuals who weren't necessarily embedded in a, in a larger social body. You know, there weren't really any social questions uh, asked uh, that Bulgarian cinema of the last, uh, of the 2000s asked. So, uh, my question to uh, Mr. Kumandarev is whether, whether he agrees with this uh, trajectory um, and uh, whether Bulgarian film recently has turned towards social criticism. Mm. Somehow, all everything that happens around us the last uh, 10 or I can talk even more about the last 30 years because last uh, or one year ago there was an anniversary 30 years from the uh, 
changes here in uh, Bulgaria and all the Eastern Europe, 30 years of this uh, famous uh, transition from totalitarian, totalitarian regime to something like a democracy. And uh, maybe uh, when this anniversary approach, we feel that it's time to make something like a balance. What happens? Why all our dream, because I'm from this generation that was, uh, this generation was on the streets in 89. While, why big part of our dreams didn't become true? And this, what we see now in our country is not the, re the reality that we dream. And uh, somehow uh, there is more and more many problems around, uh, around us. And I strongly believe, maybe this is because of my past as a medicine, as a doctor, that somehow the cinema also can uh, try to cure the, the, the problem of the society, or at least to ask, ask questions, because maybe very often it's much more important to ask the right questions, and the cinema can do this. And the basic thing that, uh, that Changes changed really uh, a lot here, in, especially in Bulgaria, is that the, the level of inequality is going more and more year after year. Uh, uh, is becoming Bulgaria is the European champion of uh, inequality. Uh, Bulgaria joined the European Union in 2007. And in this moment, uh, the rate of the inequality was around five. That means the, the top 20% rich people gained five or six, five times more than the, the poorest. Now, after 12, 11, or 13 years in the European uh, Union, now uh, the level is more than seven. So you see that uh, things are going uh, in a very bad direction. And somehow uh, the inequality, the social inequality is something that uh, really have very strong influence in every aspect of the uh, social life. It's something really that destroy the, the, the society, the solidarity, the, the, uh, all the social health, health services, everything you can see the, the result of this also including in the situation of pandemic that like, uh, like now. Uh, in 30 years in Bulgaria, the number of the poor people has increased 12 times. This, this is the statistic. So uh, all this uh, uh, reason, of course, they influence uh, the people, they influence the uh, relation between the people. And uh, somehow, uh, because I'm living here, my two kids are also living here. Somehow I really love this country. I care for this country. And the only thing that I can do, I'm a filmmaker. So the only thing that I can try is using uh, my films to ask the question, very often trying to make this with some elements of humor. Very, very often this humor is dark humor. <laughs> this is the, the, the reality. So this is the main reason why, I think, because it, it happens around us. And like in this film that you saw, Direction, uh, almost all the stories are inspired by the real uh, events, except one of the stories that is based on uh, Chekhov's uh, short story. But there is no bigger scriptwriter than the, the reality. So maybe this is my answer to you. Thank you. And it's a great answer. And, you know, it brings me also to the question I had about the transition because um, your life and cinematic career have been really probably determined by. Um, by what is uh, probably somewhat euphemistically called transition. Transition, and you must have been, uh, I suspect, 23 when 1989 took place. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, you, 
your latest films are capturing so many aspects of, of, the, of that contemporary transition to peripheral capitalism, you know, the extreme inequality, the uh, emigration that it is driving, the psychological hopelessness, the privatization of law, etc. Uh, but have you thought about uh, making a, a film specifically, a more maybe historical film specifically about the transition, uh, about the last 30 years? Um, which obviously would, would require kind of a, maybe a historical journey that... Um... You know, I'm, uh, uh, I did only one historical documentary film in my uh, career. So it's not exactly my niche, let's say. I prefer the, the feature films, the fiction films, where the, the, the emotion is much more, much more strong. And uh, you can tell all the important things to the, sto the, stories, the, the, the stories of your characters. So this is somehow the way that I choose. Uh, in general, about the, the transition period, it, it was really a, the biggest part already of my life. I spent in this 30 year transition. And uh, I can say that uh, uh, we went from one extreme to other extreme. Uh, from yes, uh, totalitarian regime, of course, with a lot of problems, a lack of, uh, a lack of uh, freedom. Uh, but in the same, the same time, it was, it was a very welfare state. Uh, and we moved to a total neoliberal capitalist experiment because this is what is happening in, in Bulgaria. It's really an experiment. And uh, during the, this transition, we destroy, uh, we destroy many uh, already built working systems like social system, health system, etc. And we have a society with the huge inequality, exploitation, and somehow we, I always joke with this, that we, uh, we did a very important change. We changed the, the, the fight in the bright future of the communism with the uh, fight uh, uh, for the invisible hand of the market that will fix everything the magic invisible hand of the mark. And uh, so all these things, I, I think it's possible to present and to ask the questions in the feature film, because this is a tradition that I really love from the Russian literature, classical literature. Uh, the classic Russian literature, they ask the question, but not doesn't give the answers. And maybe this is the, the big difference between the, also between documentary and feature film, because maybe when you are doing documentary film, you must also give the answers. But I'm not very sure about the answer. I'm a poor filmmaker, finally. Fantastic. And, and you know, speaking, you know, you, since you mentioned the dark humor, a few films. One of, in one of these instances, one of the characters in Directions Joro, I think, uh, says at one point that there is no money in Bulgarian cinema. And so, you know, taking advantage of the fact that you're a producer uh, of your last films as well as as well as their director, and, and have a better sense of the conditions of uh, Bulgarian filmmaking. Then most of us, I was wondering, uh, would you, since most of our audience is probably unfamiliar with um, the general uh, cinematic production in Bulgaria, things like uh, how many films come out every year, or uh, um, you know whether most of these films are. Is, is was the case with Pusaki or co-productions. Um, well, you know, we don't know how many, uh, since Bul Bulgarian um, 
film, uh, Bulgarian film theaters, you know, essentially, which are now mostly located in malls, uh, thoroughly monopolized by Hollywood, how easy it is for a Bulgarian film to break into distribution and uh, whether, uh, whether a Bulgarian film can have a foreign audience. Uh, I was wondering whether you can offer us this, this more infrastructural side of the, the story of Bulgarian filmmaking now. Well, you know, the situation in Bulgaria is not much different to the comparing with the other European countries. Uh, we have this system of the Bulgarian National Film Center that is financing uh, movie on, uh, with concours, few concours every year. Uh, of course, uh, we have all the possibilities uh, being part of the European Union to make all, uh, our film also as a co-production. Uh, especially my four of my five films I did as a co-production, but of course you cannot make a co-production if you don't have at the beginning your national, first your national uh, funding. So uh, it's not easy, it's difficult. There is money in Bulgaria for cinema, not so much. We hope now there will be some changes in the law of the, for the film industry. I hope that the money will be uh, more, but let's see, I'm always skeptical, but uh, let's hope. Uh, and all these possibilities for uh, to make the film as a co-production, uh, I'm using this. My last three films, the, the national financing, uh, the financing from the Bulgarian National Film Center, was around 30% of the budget. The rest I found from uh, partners, European program, uh, co-production with different country, uh, this fund for co-production uh, of uh, Elvin Marsh is also supporting the film. So the thing that I'm always, uh, I always say to my, uh, my students that uh, if you wanna make a film, you will fight and you will make it. Uh, directions and, and rounds were, were, this is the big difference comparing to the two previous films. They were extremely low budget film, but because they were ex low budget and uh, we uh, started working uh, on the idea, having in mind that we will do, we will make a low budget film, we make uh, these two films much easy comparing to my previous films that were with a much bigger budget. So if you have good ideas, uh, a good idea about a movie, you can make it also with, uh, with not so much uh, film, or not so much money. Uh, uh, of course, the distribution in Bulgaria is difficult, but it's possible if you uh, really want your film to meet the audience they, you, and you make a good campaign, you can uh, deal with this. And uh, also uh, your film is possible to, 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 to be in the cinemas in other country, like uh, also direction was sold also in many territories. Uh, it's fresh, like an example, I can say that the film was uh, in the French cinema in something like uh, 70s cinema in the same time distributed the film. It was something that for Bulgarian film was really great and also in many other countries. So if you want to work, if you believe in your film, uh, the result will come. Well, and, uh, and so in, in recent years, you know, in the Eastern Europe, there has really been only one major national success story of a national cinema, and that's obviously the Romanian New Wave. And I'm just wondering, uh, will the, what are the conditions of a Bulgarian New Wave? You know, what uh, do you think? Um, since you especially, you're also among other things, a teacher and, and uh, trained future 
Bulgarian filmmakers and and I really and have you uh, have, have your finger on the pulse of Bulgarian cinema in so many ways. Do you do you think uh, Bulgarian cinema can replicate Romania's success? Uh, we are a smaller country comparing to Romania, but I think that uh, the Bulgarian new wave already started because uh, the the last years. The last year, there, there is really very important success uh, of Bulgarian movies. Uh, last, uh, the last film of Petr uh, Volchanov is Christina Grozova won, won the main prize in uh, Karol Vagari. The film of Milko Lazarov was in uh, Berlinale. Uh, Kamen Kalev, uh, his last film, uh, February, was in the official selection in Kano already this online edition due, because of the pandemic. Uh, and many, many other films. So sometimes so, something is happening and I think that uh, is positive. So let's keep, uh, let's, uh, let, let's hope that this process will continue with uh, even more and more strong success. But I'm optimistic this day because I see around, around me, I see people who really, I uh, love the cinema and I'm uh, making mm, good films. Thank you. And so I'll ask probably one last question so as not to completely monopolize the time because we also have uh, Chris and Alexander and um, the multitudes from YouTube or, uh, or Zoom. Um, but uh, so from what I understand, uh, Directions is part of a trilogy, uh, the second one of which rounds has come out. I unfortunately haven't been able to uh, to watch it. And, and, then, uh, and then there's a, a film in the works, or in, at least that you're planning about ambulance um, ambulance workers. Um, so my first question is about the, uh, is it the structure of uh, people in cars that is uh, uh, giving unity to this trilogy? And, uh, and when, when should we expect that uh, third, third part? I must disappoint you. I don't. I really don't. Don't have any idea from where came this rumor about the third film and ambulance. <laughs> because <laughs> somehow this rumor started, and uh, uh, all the time I must explain that we never had this idea to make a film about ambulance. No, the third film. Uh, the third film is uh, totally different. Uh, comparing to the two previous films, is uh, his focus are the old people in Bulgaria because, uh, and the main character is an old woman uh, who is uh, who become victim of some very special phenomenon phenomenon here in Bulgaria. The false comes. I don't know. Maybe you know about this. And uh, we, we, with my co-script writer, we had a long discussion about the, the subject of the, about the third film. And uh, when uh, we, our, our basic idea was to make with these three films something like uh, analysis of the society and what is happening today in Bulgaria. And uh, it was clear that we cannot make this uh, without the situ including the situation of the old generation in Bulgaria. Because if there is a real victim of this uh, uh, transition period of 30 years, I can call it also a genocide. Uh, these are the all, all the, all, these are, this is the old generation, the generation of our uh, parents. Uh, because uh, I don't know uh, how many of them suffer from uh, not possibility to have uh, normal eating, normal heating at home, normal medical care, all these normal things for the Bulgarian 
greater than is something like a luxury thing. And uh, that's why we took the decision that for the third film, uh, we will, uh, our main character will be representative of uh, this uh, generation. The film is, uh, uh, the script is on my screen, just behind the Zoom window because I'm, I continue to work on it. Big part of the financing is in, already in place. We are in a very strong preparation. And if everything is fine, including with this uh, pandemic, etc., we hope to start the shooting of the film end of October this year. And uh, next year, we will be happy to, to show the film. So cross your finger for fingers for us. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank. If I can jump in here, um, thank you for for your answer. That that is exciting to to have a new project ahead. Um, but uh, my my question, I'll just ask like maybe two small questions in one question. Go, going back to the film directions, and. Um, one is um, it's very its form is really interesting, and I would second that Osen saying that I really liked uh, the film. I think it's successfully done. Um, so there, there there is this like a vignette form, right? A series of uh, linked vignettes uh, that involve these different characters into cabbies, and. Um, what came to my mind is, um, that's one question, are there any like films or directors that influence that choice of uh, having like camera within the taxi or having this like omnibus sort of film? Um, and another question is uh, related to this uh, wonderful technique of uh, having a long take, a long shot um, for e each of the scenes. Um, and this is really interesting approach because it adds to dynamism and also it creates this uh, uh, specific kind of uh, uh, geographical and temporal uh, uh, sense within which you can represent these um, different social types in Bulgaria. Um, so if you can like say a few words about, about these two, two aspects. Uh, of course, they, there are many films that are like a puzzle from uh, many stories. And uh, of course, part of them, I really love them. So for sure, uh, there is some influence uh, on me. And it was really a dream, uh, especially after Magnolia of Paul Thomas Anderson to make a film in a similar uh, structure. Uh, and uh, somehow the, 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 we started this idea about uh, taxi drivers. We started to meet many real taxi drivers to collect story. And there was, we collected so much interesting story. So it was clear that really we need a lot of different character in order to put a, at least a small part of them. Uh, there was many, many good stories that uh, we can use for a second film. Uh, about the, the, the way of shooting, the main idea was uh, to be the, in this one-shot shooting. Uh, first, it was really interesting for me to work in this. Uh, I was curious to, to work and I loved to work in this way because uh, it's very good for, for me as a director and also it's very good for the actors. For them, they are much more natural, real when they per must perform the, the whole episode. So I really uh, like this way of uh, work. So they are concentrated during the whole episode and uh, uh, also there is this feeling of reality and uh, documentary film. And not uh, uh, less, but uh, it's very important. Also, uh, I told you already that uh, the last two films, that they, they were really something between low budget and no budget films. 
And uh, this way of shooting is extremely cheap. Uh, directions was shot for 12 nights. And uh, uh, this comparing to my previous film that have something like 45, 50 days of shooting, 12 nights, uh, uh, it was really nothing. Rounds, the last film also was shot in uh, 11 nights. Of course, we did this uh, with uh, months of rehearsals, months of preparation, including, uh, of course, the first stage of the rehearsals are around this table <laughs> in the office. But after, uh, usually we do with the actor something like uh, uh, pre-shoot with a small camera without professional equipment, uh, on the real location, something like a pre-shoot of the entire film. And we do the editing of this pre-shoot. So let's say three weeks before the main shooting, we can sit and we can watch a rough version of the film. And this is really very helpful for all of us, for the actors. We discuss, we change many things uh, uh, that we don't like so much. Uh, it's very good also for the crew because, uh, you know, when you shoot in this way, every episode in one shot, you need a very, very good uh, collaboration between and coordination between all the crew. So this, in this way, we succeeded to make the film, to shoot the film in 12 nights, but with many, many, a lot, a lot of work uh, uh, before. Yeah, thank you. We, we, did, we did the same uh, in, with rounds and now in the new film uh, also I, the style, the visual style will be completely different comparing to the uh, two previous film. But of course I will shoot every episode with different shots, but every shot will be again the entire episode, because really I love I love this way of working with the actors. Yeah, th thank you so much for illuminating that process. It, it sounds like you have a sort of a draft and another draft, like several yeah. drafts before the final version. Of course, and somehow I invite my my actors to become something like a co-writer of the script because around this table we really change uh, change the dialogue change stories uh, because uh, uh, you cannot feel if a dialogue is real or fake until the moment when you put it on in the mouth of the actor yeah i i, I would say that that's visible that dialogues are street like and they help actually actors look more natural not like fake and yeah but i think chris has some questions some more questions from the audience if yeah I'm we right. have had some questions come in uh the most recent one i think you've already addressed it was part of uh, alexander's question is about the importance uh, of doing long takes instead of shorter cuts i think you addressed that that uh, question well uh someone wrote in with two rather distinct questions so i'll break them up the the first question is uh uh, what was the reception of uh, this film directions uh, of, by Bulgarian audiences? I was curious about that. If uh, you know, it was universally positive. And my my additional sort of add-on question is: were, were there any voices who felt that there was something slanderous uh, in the way you were betraying Bulgarian society? Because there are some pretty harsh uh, things said about about the state of uh, society now. The, our main. Uh, uh idea was to provoke a discussion and we succeeded. And there was many, many articles, many, many uh, discussions in the, in the uh, social media, uh, including there was uh, something that happens two months ago. It was in every, uh, it was, this story was really everywhere. There was, uh, remember from uh, the film Directions, the, the surgeon, the doctor, who is telling 
that he is uh, from the next week he will start to work in Hamburg. And this evening is his last uh, duty day in the hospital. And there was a, a reportage on the Bulgarian national TV with a young doctor working on the ambulance, COVID ambulance, during the, the biggest crisis, uh, the biggest crisis end of November. And there was a camera shooting him on his uh, service. And the, the way that the reportage ended that he said, this was my last service in this ambulance. Next week, I start my new job in München, in Munich. <laughs> so the only difference was Hamburg and Munich. And everywhere there was a, a commentary, there was that exactly the same thing that was described in uh, our film. So uh, still this film is very well known. Uh, almost the biggest part of the population here saw the film and I hope that something stay in their mind and I hope that we can influence some uh, some some positive change let's see wonderful the, in, the... March, in March we have elections here so we'll see okay uh, the, the same member of our audience had a, had a separate question uh, about uh, how important you think your background in psychiatry is for your treatment of your film subjects. Uh, I cannot talk about psychiatry uh, so much. First, uh, because uh, I officially I'm not a psychiatrist. I started to making my specialization on psychiatry, but I didn't finish. I worked only four years. So uh, if I must be honest, I, I can say I'm a doctor and I have the diploma of a doctor, but I'm not, I, I work in the psychiatry hospital, but I, I'm not a, a, a psychiatrist, but of course, there is some influence, but I think mainly uh, my background as a doctor is much more important because uh, uh, these are 10 years of my life, six years uh, as a student of medicine. And during these six years also, I work as a nurse in, uh, in hospital. So uh, this is also a very important experience. And after these four years uh, in this uh, psychiatric hospital, child psychiatric hospital. And of course, uh, uh, this is uh, experience. And you know, you know, you know, you know the life also from the not so bright side. And this experience is really very helpful uh, uh, for me as a filmmaker and also uh, making, be a student of medicine is something that is not very easy. And I think that this process teach me uh, uh, about to, 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 to have more discipline when I'm working, to, to plan things, to organize things. So somehow this is some small different difference between me and my other colleagues. Uh, and I think it, for me, it's useful. So mainly this experience, uh, because when you are a doctor, uh, you are dealing with human, uh, human beings. And this is the most important thing in, uh, also in the, in the movies. Per perhaps a perception you share with uh, uh, Anton Chekhov, whose work I guess you admire. One of uh, my favorites, of course. <laughs> Uh, another question, a kind of a technical question uh, uh, about uh, how you make films or the, the process of filmmaking. What, what kind of thing most often causes you to have to reshoot a scene? Is it uh, uh, problems with the set, the lighting, the actors? What is the, the most common thing that, that makes you have to go do it again? Mm. Usually I'm not doing a lot of reshoots because really my actors are very well prepared. Uh, usually, and it was like this uh, in uh, directions also, usually 
we are not doing more than two, three, let's say four ratio. Uh, of course, there was uh, in directions, there was episodes who were very difficult where we had technical problems. So especially the episode like this on the bridge, we did something like nine, 10 or 11 ratio because of technical problems. Uh, because it was a 19 minutes long episode, uh, driving a car in a different place of the town. So mostly there are technical problems, and, but in general, my, actor, my actors are good and they are very well prepared for the shooting. So the shooting, so two, three, maximum four takes if there is no technical problems. And if I feel that we have uh, on the second or third they take everything is perfect. I don't. I don't see why to torture the actors to make more, more, more retakes. Very good. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, is writing, uh, asking about um, how this film may soon become available for uh, those of us who would perhaps like to use it in our film classes. Uh, do you know if it will soon be available to university libraries or maybe on the, the Canopy platform? I don't know because we have uh, we have a word sales agent of this film. Every, every one of my films, this is the, the reality of, you know, of the film industry. You need to have a word sales agent. So they are dealing with uh, all, the, all these things. Uh, who are out of the territory of Bulgaria. I have, as a poor producer and director, I have the rights only for Bulgaria. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, an interesting question that, that came up. Uh, someone was wondering, is the actor in the beginning scene and the actor for the heart patient at the end the same person? I guess someone saw a resemblance there. I told you I like film who end, who pose question question but don't answer the don't give the answers. Probably yes, I think yes. But let's give him the 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 to 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 this question to stay more in his mind to think about this to 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 make his own version. I think. For me, as, a, as when I watch a film, I, I like this kind of movies, when there is no answer to everything. And I have the freedom of my imagination and I think after the end of the film, uh, what happens, what is possible to happen, why this happened. And I think we, we try to make it like this. Very good. Uh, another question uh, that I think you, we sort of know the answer to, but someone asking, why did you choose a dog uh, for that elderly taxi driver to share his grief with? Because in the original short story of Chekhov that we, we really liked, that I really like, it was a horse. And uh, we just, uh, we just, make this short story, we translated this to something that is happening today on the streets. And today on the streets, you can, it's not very easy to find the horse, but of course it's possible to find a dog. So this was the, the reason. But in general, we, we kept all the, the, almost all the dialogue from the original Chekhov uh, short story. I, it sounded so familiar to me. I remember when I was watching the, the film, I was like, where have I heard this before? And then and mm. uh, it was only in the, the closing credits I saw the reference to Czech. And I was like, of course. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the uh, sort of a technical question I had as, as someone who's studied a few different languages, um, can you just help, uh, help me gloss the title for the film, Posoki, which in English is rendered as directions. And of course this word in English has a lot of different possible meanings. Does it have as many possible meanings in, in Bulgarian or is it something more specific and limited? Mm, directions, yes, Posoki in Bulgaria is mainly the directions of your life, the directions that uh, you go, etc. 
but uh, uh, you know, every film when uh, he starts his uh, international distribution, always we are very curious in every country what title they will choose for your film. Especially in France, they choose not the right title, I can say. <laughs> it was Taxi Sofia. Mm. Uh, that is, was nothing, I think. But, but in Spain, the title was excellent. The title was Destinos. That means mm -hmm. in the same time, directions and uh, uh, destinies. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very perfect uh, translation was of the title, the Spanish one. That's lovely. That's a, a nice uh, coincidence. I think the English works works well. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me see. One just came in. Uh, let me see if I can summarize this. Uh, boy, a kind of complicated question. Uh, well, maybe you can. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it in the general terms, and you could decide how you want to answer. How do you balance uh, uh, speaking as an individual uh, with your own idiosyncrasies and anxieties? Uh, with the task of speaking on, on our questioner says on behalf of Bulgarian society, but maybe we could say to as a reflection of Bulgarian society. Um, mm, I think that it's possible to speak in behalf of uh, Bulgarian society. Making art and making cinema is very individual act. If you want to be honest, you must speak from your point of view. Uh, uh, if you if you try to speak from the behalf of society, uh, it's a hundred percent sure that it will be fake. This is Good my, my point of view, and that this is what I'm trying to do in my films. Uh, and you know, when you uh, write a script, you you make a film, and uh, uh, if you are if you are not honest when you put the film on the big screen, immediately uh, the audience will feel this. So the, that's what I'm trying to, to teach also my students. Try to put in your films your personal story, your personal emotion, because this is the only way uh, to, to make a, a film that will touch the heart of other people. Sounds like Good advice. Uh, yeah, I, the, I, think the, we're... I think the politics they are trying to, to talk for on behalf of the whole society. <laughs> <laughs> we see that the results are not very good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any of our other panelists like to, to step in with an, a follow up question? Yeah, I would like uh, in regard to, to the politics and the, and the landscaping the, the social types and uh, social melodies also in your film. Uh, what, I, what I found it interesting is the, the kind of urban scape that you gave, like the, the glances of the cities in the night from the taxis. Um, and what I noticed, there are a lot of like uh, casinos, uh, a lot of like uh, window shops. Can you say a little bit more about that, uh, your choice and how does that connect in general with what you wanted, with the message you wanted to convey? Well, we, we shot the, the real streets in Sofia and I'm, I'm born in Sofia. All my life I spent uh, in Sofia. I was really shocked when we started the location scouting for this film. I was really shocked that there is so much so much casinos in Sofia. And you notice them during the night because uh, during the day, somehow there is not so much lights, uh, but during the night when the other part of the street is dark, they have usually very bright uh, lights. Uh, I was really shocked with this. So even there is there was opinions here uh, in Bulgaria, oh, maybe they receive some money. This the film receives some money from some casinos <laughs> to show that there exists. No, this is the the pure reality, and this is part of the diagnosis. Uh, in a society with the extreme uh, uh, inequality, of course, there is more and more uh, 
casino because people uh, don't have other options for hope except casino, uh, some lotteries and things like this. This is part of the diagnosis of the state of the, 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 the society. Mm -hmm. I was like going back to the film industry that it's interesting situation in England, for example, that from the state lottery, you will have some cuts that goes back to the culture, culture right to funding films. Is it possible to do that with casinos in Bulgaria? Or? Mm, we try many times, but uh, as a film industry and film society, we try many times, but uh, until now without any success. Uh, you know, every I think the, the national lottery in the UK, it's a national, really national lottery. Uh, in Bulgaria, it's much more difficult. So, uh, I don't know. Let's hope that now with these changes in the new law, maybe there will be some uh, some option. But normally, this is the this is really the normal way to support uh, art, cinema, etc. But you know, it's not so easy. Rosen, uh, some other thing you would like to follow up with? Yes, I and I unfortunately my questions tend to be somewhat larger uh, <laughs> in scope, but um, I, and, and now that uh, after the ambulance <laughs> story, I'm, I'm slightly hesitant to ask them because many of them are based on internet research. But uh, I read that, uh, and unfortunately, not living in Bulgaria. I, do not follow Bulgarian television, but I read that uh, you have actually uh, authored the whole very large series about Bulgarian filmmakers and historical Bulgarian cinema. Yeah, it was in the 90s, yes. And, um, uh, and I, I'm just wondering uh, uh, to what extent do you see yourself as part of a certain Bulgarian cinematic tradition, are the filmmakers, you know, be, because Bulgarian cinema is a small cinema uh, uh, and the specificity that comes with it, and are there any filmmakers um, from, from that tradition with which you identify, or is it mostly an international uh, set of references that are more important to you? Uh, of course, uh, I feel part of the Bulgarian uh, cinema tradition and uh, making uh, during uh, these four or five years at the end of 90s, I was the one of the directors of this uh, TV emission about Bulgarian cinema and I met really a lot of uh, legend of Bulgarian cinema and uh, uh, this was something that uh, really help me a lot and op open a lot my eyes and give me a lot of emotion and knowledge about the Bulgarian cinema. So it was really very useful for me. Uh, and of course, there are many Bulgarian directors who, who really I love, but I can say that one of them, it's really something that uh, someone who I watch all his films many, many times, Oh, I love these films. I uh, even the end of the directions, the film that you saw, was some somehow homage to his last film. I'm talking about Bulgarian director Ludmil Kirkov. Uh, his last film, uh, Friday Evening, ended in the similar way with this no episode, and somehow we took the decision. Of course, he died uh, more than 12, 20 years ago. Somehow we decided to end with snow episode, including also like homage to, 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 to him. Uh, so yes, uh, I, I feel part of this uh, tradition and part of the Bulgarian cinema. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm watching uh, for even from my teenagers, uh, 
teenagers' ears. I'm watching uh, almost every day international films. I was part of, uh, there, was, there was one society here around one cinema in Sofia. Cinema Dujba was the name after it became Odeon. That was something like a, a film university open to the, the, to the public. So of course the international cinema, of course, influenced me also, but this is a, this is a normal way. Wonderful. Well, uh, I know that it's rather late in Sofia. <laughs> um, it's all but, already tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, I, I don't want to have uh, our distinguished guests have to work any further overtime. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Commander, for, for sharing uh, uh, your experience and helping us understand this film. And uh, thank you and congratulations on this film, which, which I, I think is wonderful. And I'm so glad we were able to include it in, in our series this year. Thank you, Rosin, for uh, uh, helping us uh, get at the film and helping us uh, uh, to uh, meet and understand uh, uh, the director. And of course, thank you, Alexander, for the ongoing collaboration. And uh, thanks to our audience for joining us. Yeah, uh, one more word from our-, our uh... Yeah, I want to say something because already here in Sofia is tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow, 13th of uh, January is the official, uh, Celebration National Day of Bulgarian Cinema. So happy day of the Bulgarian cinema. Thank you and yeah, ha happy holiday to you. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. So, so again, thank you all for joining us. Um, we're still working on the fine points of the remainder of this series. Uh, we are looking forward to having in April the uh, Hungarian film One Day, uh, which is of about the same year. I think it's also 2017. And we're hoping to pin down a Polish and, uh, and a Romanian film uh, also for the spring. So uh, do follow us uh, uh, on you know, the Harriman Institute and, and please come join us for the continuation of this series. Thank you all and, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.